Taoiseach, your policy of withdrawing medical cards from sick citizens has no credibility whatsoever. And this evening's PMB from Sinn Féin in this issue gives you an opportunity to change your tune and to, to rectify this crisis. There's also another crisis, a major housing crisis causing untold misery to thousands of citizens, including children. And within sight of this chamber, there are thousands of people, some young, some not so young, sleeping rough on our streets. Other families, thousands of them, are living in cramped, overcrowded conditions with parents and grandparents because they cannot get a home of their own. And mortgage distress is also a major social issue. The number of families in mortgage arrears is now 136,564. Now, your proposal, as I heard it on Morning Ireland, aimed at encouraging banks to lend more only to buyers of new houses reads like an extract from the election stunt section of the Fianna Fáil handbook of strokes and other scams. Doesn't make any sense at all in dealing with the crisis. There are also well-founded concerns that your proposal will lead to inflated house prices. Tishok, you must know that housing lists in all local authorities are lengthening. There's the bill for emergency accommodation is spiralling. There's a tenfold increase in the last year in spending by the Dublin Region Homelessness Executive on emergency accommodation. The Peter McVerry Trust has dealt with 3,600 homelessness cases, mostly young men, in the last 12 months alone. And the numbers of family losing, families losing their homes has more than doubled, according to Focus Ireland. Thank you. Despite the spending on housing in Dublin City, it's been reduced by 53 million. So a radical change of policy is needed. Sinn Féin housing spokesperson Desi Ellis has already suggested a plan of investment in social housing that would see the construction of 7,500 new homes on top of current targets. And there's €1 billion Euros of unused money in the Strategic Investment Fund which could be used for this, stimulating the construction industry and providing homes. Mark, it's all as dit nilain tin ton mar de tin hon fein. So Taoiseach, will you commit to taking this practical measure as part of a package of initiatives including the introduction of a right to housing, protection of families from eviction and rent controls. Thank you. Tisha. Well, you see, Deputy Adams, you, you talk about changing tunes here. There are a few issues you could change your tune on yourself, but I won't go into that now. I'll say to you that uh, when you speak of the uh, housing problem and you put forward Deputy Ellis's view that you take the billion euro from the National Pension Reserve Fund and start building houses, even you, with all your magic, can't, uh, can't conjure up houses in the next six months. Today the government will launch its construction strategy with 75 particular and specific actions to stimulate this industry. Now I want you to understand this, Deputy Adams. The legacy left behind by these people over here is an obscenity on, uh, on Ireland and on its people. Pyrite, greed, corruption, planning scandals, credit as if, it, as, as if you could throw it out forever, somebody else's money. Uh, are, are, we, are we to have, the, as I said before to you I think in questions in here, the, the hallmark of the last government's catastrophic failure was Priory Hall. That put people into those kind of houses. Would you please, well, yet again, would you say quiet, this please? government has to come along and clean up the mess. Now, Deputy Adams, I make no apology for saying I do not accept anybody's assertions that this government, in cleaning up this mess, is going to go down the road of creating a further housing bubble. There are 100,000 people on the live register who were involved in the construction industry. Plasterers, block layers, chippies, tilers, roofers and everything else. We want to see that these people get an opportunity to get back into the world of work. And we want to see that families and young people and beginners on the housing ladder get good housing at affordable prices that is of top quality nature. Not like what we had before and which unfortunately we've discovered in various parts of the country. So today the government will launch a strategy on this, on this regard, uh, Deputy Adams. And just yesterday, 
as a further indication of where government is on this. 50 million was allocated to the Minister for Housing, both for homelessness, where there's a further 10 million put in, 20 million for direct construction, uh, and 20 million for bringing back a further, uh, further number of houses that are empty, boarded up, and could make very good houses. That will bring, bring the sum up there to, to 1,800. So believe me, Deputy Adams, this is an issue that concerns families, people, jobs, employment and opportunity. It is not about contractors, it is not about developers, it is not about greed, it is not about bankers, it's about people, our economy and our jobs for the future. Thank you. Deputy Adams. Deputy Adams, please. Thank you. Can I interpret your answer as no? Because I put forward a suggestion, a thought out suggestion. And you talk about people, this is about citizens, difference between people and citizens. Citizens have rights, and that includes the right to a home. Now, you are going to announce your construction strategy. Are you bringing it in here so that we can discuss it and thrash it about and make suggestions to you? Oh no, you're not. You're not coming into the Oireachtas with it. You're going out. You know, the type of thing you do during an election campaign, Minister Robert, that's what you're doing, and people will see through this. Now, Sorry, would you please, for goodness sake, would you please allow a reply? And would you stay quiet? Now, I, Deputy, would you stick to your time too, please? Thank you. Okay, County Court, go to Margaret. I mean, I, this is like a circus. I'm not sure you want to sit here and listen to it. What the public think about it, I, I, I fear to, to think. People shouting from the back benches as if they're making a contribution. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, uh, John Corlea. I, I give a thumbnail sketch of a deep, deep, deep crisis, which I'm sure you are aware of. But there's also another issue which I didn't answer earlier. I, I said at the end of my question about the people who have been, the citizens who have been forced into homelessness by raising rents in the private sector, and yet you refuse to introduce fair rent control to tackle this. And Daft.ie has said that rents in Dublin are up by 14% and 9% across the state Thank you. in the last year. Now, fair rent control alone will not solve the housing crisis, but it must be part of a package of initiatives to help ease the problem. And incidentally, the building of social housing has to start now. We're, we're not looking for Thank much. You, we know what's needed in terms Please of put these your question. Uh, needs of citizens. So surely, Taoiseach, it is the duty of the state to defend citizens against rec renting landlords. It is the duty of the state to set rents at fair levels. It is the duty of the state to provide homes for citizens. So where is the state's duty of care? Spell that out to me, please, Thank you. As, you, as you see it, especially the children. What is the government doing to tackle this crisis, which will only worsen in the time ahead? Teacher. See, I met, a, I met a young mother yesterday evening uh, on, on, on one of the streets where I was uh, canvassing, and uh, she had uh, three young children under five, and she cried uh, bitter tears in that she had been sent to uh, um, a very small apartment with inadequate facilities uh, in an area that is used by drug pushers and drug users. A very, uh, a very um, powerful statement ma made by this young mother. Now, at the height of the boom, uh, Deputy Adams, 2006... Yeah. Well, maybe we should talk about the past as well. Because in 2006, please, Deputy please, Adams, please, please. there were 93,000 housing units finished in the country. 93,000. The corresponding figure for last year was 8,000, a reduction of 91%. So we have a construction sector that is about half the size that it should be, that is very much below European standards. We should be building 25 to 30,000 houses per year. That's why there's 88 million gone into the coffers of the Minister for Housing for social housing. That's why NAMA want to provide 
four and a half thousand houses over the next two to three years. That's why we want to see a return to the construction sector, Deputy Adams, with the hopeful creation of 60,000 jobs between here and Thank 2020. We need, to, we need to have a process by which we can deal with the claims for people, valid claims, for young couples, for young people to get a start on the housing ladder where they have affordable quality housing built by people, Deputy Adams, who know what they're doing and not of a situation where apartment after apartment is fired up and you send them into them and then you discover they've either got pyrite or they're like Priory Hall. We're not going back there, Deputy Adams, to get this right in the interest of the people, the jobs, the citizens and our country. So in that sense, yes, we're going to have to wait some time before we can actually put blocks on the ground and put people into those houses. Even your Deputy Ellis, good man that he is, good idea that he has. Thank you. Put the billion on the table and you'll still wait 18 months or two years before you move families in. But that's not what your leader says. Thank you. Deputy Catherine Murphy. Deputy